Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're checking out something I wasn't expecting to come out this year. The next part, sort of, of Hell of a Boss. This is going to be Just Look My Way, the official music video. And I wasn't expecting this because usually when they do music videos, it's a bit of a episode that's been compressed just to the song itself. This is different because the episode it's from, if there is an episode it's from, hasn't come out yet. It's entirely possible this might be a standalone song like Addiction was, but I don't know. And there's an entire possibility this might be the spoiler for something that maybe wasn't supposed to be released just yet, or maybe it was already and they moved things back. I don't know. And frankly, I don't care because it's Dizzy Pop, it's a hell of a boss. I'm going to like it. You guys know the deal. Link below. Hit it up. If you haven't already, fix that. You did? Great. Let's get started. Whoa. Okay. Dude. I don't think we've ever seen Stolas' office. We've seen a few other offices. We've seen the workplace of a certain sin of lust. I don't know why I forgot Ozzy's name for a second there. But that actually looks so cool. I'm sorry. I'm just... The sun, the moon, the stars, the sweeping sides the stairs he has himself surrounded by candlelight uh, star colored candlelight at that the blue flame with all the books but then the chandelier what looks like a sun surrounded by all the orbits of the planets dude sorry i'm actually blown away by the design right now this is so cool a present oh it's the ge gem Oh, oh, this was in the episode, a couple episodes prior to this, when Stolas was asking for a way from Ozzy to let Blitz move without using the book. This was the gem they were bargaining for. That's why they were even there two episodes ago. It's why Stolas was helping him because he was trying to get the gem. That's why he was talking to Ozzy in the first place. Oh, so this is definitely something that is probably going to be in the upcoming episode or a spoiler for it season finale or half season finale i thought the previous episode was it is expected an oath by blood to hold the tome damn the starlight passes overhead fuels all the skills i've honed I Okay, I am not a music aficionado. And I've loved the previous songs that are edgy and have off-putting harsh lyrics. I can't do Fizz's voice. I, I just cannot do that. Now, granted, I can't do impressions in general, but it's details. So I've gotten used to this style of music being more edgy, being more gruff, being somewhat comedic, because a lot of Fizz's songs are fun. Even if it sounds like someone is scratching your throat out with sandpaper or like you literally inhaled a bunch of smoke from a fire that literally burned you inside out. You know, funny how they get that to be in there. It's a very different tone. But already this right here, just reminding me, Stolas is probably one of the absolute damn best singers. I think it's Brandon Ron Who does Stolas again? You know, it's probably listed in some here. Bryce. I need to figure out who that is. I can't not remember names. But... Lululand, his voice when he sang was hypnotic. And just in the few tones already. Like, listen to this and tell me you're not just going, dude. Not to mention the music in the background. Watcher of these ancient rites. Dude, I love the art with him. Yet I find myself drawn from that path on those dazzling moonlit nights. Let me hold you. Keep you moonlit close nights, you grab the moon. I long to hear your voice. But dearest, I know better now. I must give you this choice. I can give you. So it's not just the gem. He's reflecting on the fact that he's about to give Blitz a way out. And even though in the last few episodes, they've seemed to almost come together and hell, the entire second season has been weird. Like they just put the end of season one. I'm not counting the episode with Queen Bee. I'm not counting that. The entire end of season one was such a horrible catastrophe for the relationship. And then season two kind of didn't touch on it except for when Stolas took action 
to do something that he felt was important. And Blitz kind of wallowed like he's unfortunately prone to do. So now we see Stolas doing the song to work through his internal monologue about letting Blitz go. And considering Blitz is one of the only good things he has in his life because his life, other than Ophelia, is kind of shit. Be embarrassing if I got her name wrong. Damn, the range on that voice. Because it's not just him giving the choice, it's realizing Blitz very well might just cut contact with him. The worst part is, Blitz probably will. I mean, I don't have any doubt something will bring them together because that seems to be the narrative arc here, but Blitz is going to screw himself on this one. There's no way he won't do that. With this kind of out, that's his entire character is self-destruction. With very few examples otherwise, he's getting better. Fizz is fixing his relationship with him. And I do mean Fizz is doing Blitz is helping, but Fizz is taking a lot of steps there. And Luna, in general, is always the one good thing he's done and never fucked up. He's a fuck-up, but he didn't fuck that up. And this, though... It's not there yet, and he's going to hurt himself. And this is Stolas realizing he's about to get hurt. This unspoken contract. God, I love these details. Sorry, I... The effect of walking on water in the moonlight and just watching the ripples, I love seeing this in any type of animation. I, I just love this style. It's so freaking hypnotic. When you're not here Initially it was this rooted pain? I don't care that you're of lower station Or prime to save my dark temptations Why can't you understand? Let me explain And the part here is He's looking at this as knowing Blitz is looking at this as a business transaction but while that's mostly true and i i know i said blitz is gonna fuck it up there's no way he won't do that blitz has taken a lot of steps to show that he actually does care for stolas as well for one finding out that stolas could get hurt and that actually kind of shocking him multiple episodes ago three episodes yeah it was only three episodes oh geez or was it four i think it was about three episodes or just that moment right at the end when Stolas is in the hospital and he's at the lowest point ever and Blitz tries to type to him. Blitz is kind of unable to write. He can't write. So everything he's typing in, the reason it looks horrible is because he doesn't know how to spell. He doesn't know all this stuff. He's completely self-taught and what you see is all he has. So the reason he doesn't type is because that's all he got. That's all he's doing. And he's doing it for Stolas. Blitz doesn't go out of his way for people he doesn't care about. We've seen the crazy, and I do insane, specifically mean insane levels of crazy, that he will do for Millie and Moxie. And he does something, at least for him, that might be harder. Not going on to crazy stuff, but just doing something he's not good at. Just writing, talking to someone. But I'm not even sure he realizes he's doing that right now. That's the problem. And Stolas knows it's going to go bad. But he's doing it anyway. What's left for me and my broken heart if I cannot have you? He's going to be in rough shape. Unless it's me. And no matter what in this world I could give, the string tied to the to get through the walls you've conjured up to live is this what you feel and he knows about how he's building walls to save himself cannot comprehend. 
I wasn't actually sure how much Stolas was aware of Blitz's mentality, but these lines very much show that it's not a secret. He knows because saying these walls you conjured up to protect yourself to live. Did I even get that line right? I think I did. Through the walls you conned up. Oh, conned up to live. Is this what you feel? Ah. So he realizes that a lot of it is lies he built about himself. Stealing, cheating, lying, murder. But I mean, it's hell. Who cares? He realizes the mentality here is someone being defensive and putting up barriers to protect themselves. He gets that. Which is probably why he knows Blitz is going to do the defensive thing. It sucks because he understands it. If he didn't, it would be drama, but maybe easily resolved because he might find something out and then take a different action. But here he knows exactly what's going to happen because he does actually understand. It almost feels like we're watching a breakup of a couple that actually is good for each other, but they're just in situations where this feels like it's the only option and neither one actually wants it, but they're also not able to stop it at this point. I, I don't have experiences with breakups. Technically, my only ex-girlfriend became my ex because I married her instead, so I'm not exactly the right person to ask about this. But it seems horrible. Going by a realm that cannot comprehend what you are. So I'll grant you this mercy, this bind on our souls needs to end. What did he say? Needs to end. Oh, I thought he said mend. End is much, much worse. Mend might even be accurate, but end is... Self-inflicted wounds. I will try to make amends For making you means to an end So look my way Please look my way God damn it's Tolis. <laughs> and yeah, I'll make amends for making him the means to an end. Because Stolis looked at how he was treating Blitz. And even though Stolis was literally looking at Blitz as his only good thing in life, other than his daughter, because his life, his wife, everything else. I mean, his absentee father was probably one of the better ones shown, if only because the others have been so... It's like their father's in hell. Two on the nose? Probably. But... <sighs> he used Blitz. And initially, we as the audience were exposed to Stolas as this over-the-top sex fiend who's the most disturbed, perverted monster. And because, okay, yeah... He's a demon lord in hell. Of course he's like that, is the initial thought process going in. But then the more you find out, the more you realize, oh no, this isn't him. This is him acting out on the extreme amounts of freedom he's never been able to have. And generally, he's a nerd. He's kind of happy-go-lucky, easily amused. Funny little Lululand things just amuse him out of all end. He's chill and thoughtful and... <sighs> easily hurt and he's been surrounded by a lot of people who really like taking advantage of that and by that i mean most of hell and his wife mostly his wife almost entirely his wife and maybe brother-in-law which we don't really know much about yet might be in comics for all i know i hope he does actually make amends god i hate seeing him cry and just say, look my way. And the feeling of drowning, literal in the illusion. Oh, that's even worse. Like, just, just look at the eyes right here as he realizes. You actually watch the light leave his eyes. Oh, fuck, man. Like, the teardrop falls out, the light leaves his eyes, he realizes it was a dream, he's not actually reaching for him, and the feeling of drowning is all his own.
and of course it ends the way it began, with the doors closing on him. <sighs> because it began with the doors opening. So we got to see a look inside, and we're immediately shut out. That's a good narrative technique, because it adds a sense of closure, but god damn. I'm just going to check out who sings for Stolis, because that was insane. Bryce Pinkham as Stolis. You know, I know I've heard this before. I know I've heard him before. I know I've seen his name before. I just cannot seem to remember shit. It's a thing. I'll probably forget I did this as well in the future, but at least right now I remember it. God damn, is he good. You know, I said... I got used to all the previous songs being slightly more comedic or upbeat and just slightly edgy and fun and hard-hitting and energetic. And apparently I wasn't the only one thinking that because Vipsy Pop went in there and was like, hey, time to hit you in the nuts. Go up to your heart and just ram it in a few more times. Because at this point, I'm using a steak in this metaphor. If it's an actual steak, a physical steak, or one that's being grilled and we're just going to do this the old-fashioned way of T-boning you right through the chest and just dragging it around. Yeah, it's time to do that kind of emotional damage. <sighs> That song, it showed him accepting he had to change. It showed Stolas realizing that he was treating Blitz in a way that would easily show he didn't care. He just wanted the sex. But then he actually came to care about the person. And even though we saw he did care about the person, but he was overjoyed and probably too emphasized on his own freedom because he didn't have that. Realizing that's how he treated him, trying to reach out and then still failing down, falling into the water and drowning as he wakes up and the light leaves his eyes. It's a blatant and blunt metaphor to see on the screen, but it doesn't make it easier because that is just sad. I don't know if this is going to be in the next episode. But I hope not, because I don't think I could take watching this again with more episodes surrounding it, making it more emotionally intense. That would just hurt, man. I'm going to go hug my wife and pet some kittens. Because right now, after this, I need it. For everyone watching, if you have that option as well, do it. Otherwise, cat videos are great. Links below, original video, hit it up. I'll see you guys in the next one, which hopefully isn't going to be as sad as this one seems to be hinting it will be. Oh, that's going to be rough. <sighs>